situation where Jamal Adams has phantom injuries and can't practice? I don't. I want to give Joe Douglas the benefit of the doubt, but then in the back of my mind, the Comecchio simile right. situation comes up. Like, you, you can't tell me the GM didn't know about Osemele's situation in the team. Like, who do you think they're getting permission from on this? They're getting permission from the owner, the GM on all this. Like, hey, do we delay his surgery again? Do we do this? Like, that. that's upper management decisions. So I, I can't give Douglas the benefit of the doubt because of all these other situations that are going on. And now right. Darnold's mono that took, like, a whole year to recoup from. Mono does not take that long. I've had yeah, it, trade it, it, rumors today about a guy that they literally just signed this offseason. Yes. And Le'Veon Bell. Yeah. It, and it, he came out on Twitter. Uh, I don't remember exactly what time it was, but he uh, came out with a video saying he's still happy to be a Jet. Um, basically preaching patience to Jets fans and that you don't build a winning organization in a year. So, I mean... Uh, Robbie Anderson tweeted something similar. I think it was like uh, the Wolf of Wall Street thing where he goes, I'm staying, you know. And so at least, you know, you got two young pieces there. I mean, I think Robbie's younger than uh, Le'Veon, but still two young, talented guys that in spite of all the storylines and narratives want to be in New York. And you have a guy who I've seen enough to believe as a franchise quarterback in Sam Darnold. I mean, yeah, the mono thing was strange. But he's made enough throws. Way too he's... long. I'm sorry. It's just <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you also want to be obviously careful. I mean, it's not worth lacerating an organ just so you can get back into the game a little bit quicker. Yeah, and then his spleen was like the watermelon, and I'm like, Mono never made my spleen swell that much. I don't know. I guess that is a symptom, but I just uh, I just think this team is too good. I'm upset. You know, I'm not even a Jets fan, but I, I really think they should have held on to Leonard Williams. It seems like they're closer to a playoff team than they are a rebuilding team. But, but he, now... was, he wasn't putting up stats like he was the past couple of years, though. That's the thing. He was underperforming big time this year. And if he was playing at his 17 and 18 level, I believe they would have gotten a second low second rounder for him. I really do. That's fair, but you, especially as a guy who's witnessed three four for so long, knows yeah. that a, a defensive end in three four, you don't get sacks that often. You, you're supposed to take on sacks. double teams. Like, yeah, I'm not saying sacks. I'm talking about more tackles, tackles for losses, stuff right. like that. I I know you're not going to get to the QB unless you're like one of those special talents, like a Geno Atkins or a, a, a Gerald McCoy. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying more of. There's still not as much disruption when I watch this tape. The past couple games I've watched as much as I've seen in the past. Well, I mean, I've already read some reports that Quinn and Williams work, I think is questionable. So hopefully they made the right move and letting the right Williams go. Lackadaisical campus at Alabama. Yeah. I E Eddie Lacey, ha ha Clinton Dix. Look at their work ethic guys. Just saying. <laughs> I don't know if that's totally fair, but yeah, here and there you could point out some guys. Never take the Bama boys. <laughs> but, um, Tank also, for Hebert, not Tua. And in, uh, in more roster news, some more boring roster news, two kickers were cut and two kickers were signed today. Matt Bryant, God. Well, yes. he was formerly at the Atlanta Senior Citizen Home and then got signed to a contract for Atlanta, and now he's back at the Atlanta Senior Citizen Home. Yes, the rusty and no longer trusty, apparently, Matt Bryant, replaced by Young Hoo Kui. Young Hoo yep. Ko. That's right. Uh, steps into Atlanta now and in New like England. Eight teams already. You have Mike Nugent replaced by uh, the folk master himself, Nick Folk. <laughs> Tell me a story. Oh my <laughs> God. That just, ever since Goskowski went down, it's just been nothing but a mess for New England at that position. Like, if there's one weakness, it's special teams. If they lose in the playoffs, it's going to be by a field goal. If they lose, like, to me, that's what it means. Is I think the kicker's going to come back and on them. Speaking of New England kickers, have you been Ooh. following Vinatieri's struggles? Maybe. A little bit. Wow. Uh, PFG Vibes can uh, confirm this. It's been a rough go for Adam Vinatieri in Indianapolis. He had a game-winning kick, though. I mean, if you miss five and make the one that wins the game, <laughs> you're like, yeah, we'll forget about the other five. That's fair. That is I mean, fair. He misses a 41 and a 37. And then puts up a 51. 
Vinatieri is like, listen, I signed this contract because I'm only good for 50 plus. Don't play me otherwise. And more kicker news. How about Pinero in Chicago? <laughs> I don't blame him one bit for messing that kick because one, Nagy knows that he likes to be on the right hash. He does not like to be on the left hash. Eddie even said this. He goes, I told coach I wanted to be on the right hash. That's where my comfortable spot is on the field for kicking. Anywhere, from any distance. And what does Nagy do? Have Mitch kneel down directly on the left hash. <laughs> like, god dang, man. Like, And then, of course, like this missed kick brings just memories back of the Philadelphia loss. In the playoffs for Chicago, like, oh, my God. All I can think was, yep, here we go again. Fans are going to want a kicker's head on the pike tomorrow morning. It is interesting. Uh, Tampa Bay seems to have right, right in, you know, gotten the ship straightened, if you will, right in the course. Man, I'm really messing up that expression. Uh, but, uh, they lost. Well, in the kicker's... Uh, as oh yeah, the kick, go. they fixed the kicking game, but they they can't figure out the defense or the offense. I mean, I mean, one they were good in two thirds before, and now you're good at one third, and the other two thirds is bad. I mean, <laughs> something's going on here. There's too much focus yeah. in one area. It's just uh, it's I've never seen such kicking struggles before. I I mean, all of a sudden making the the point after attempt a 15 yard field. I've never seen so many missed. 15-yard field goal attempts in my whole life watching football, and now all of a sudden, since we're calling it an extra point attempt, it's thrown the whole game a, a monkey wrench. Yeah. Um, they used to say, oh, this one's a chip shot. Might as well be an extra point, and now the guys are missing it left and right. But I like it, though, because it adds <laughs> the extra excitement in the game. You always oh, knew I from, like, it. a 23-yard field goal before was money. Yeah. The only person who misses that is Blair Walsh. So... I, like, I want to dive into this Andy Dalton stuff, but talking about this kicking stuff brings about a um, a scenario. I think they were talking about a rule change going into next season rather than onside kicks. Is this familiar to you? I've heard of a little bit. You have some sort of attempt from your 35. You try to get to the 50-yard line, and if you get it, you get it. If you don't, then the other team takes over there. I think that's something uh, worth looking at, especially with the onside kick being so worthless now that the players do not have a head start how dare you micah high just return one for a touchdown that <laughs> yeah that didn't work out very well for the kicking team i don't care i still got to see a touchdown on one though <laughs> i want to bring out i wanted to bring up a homer trojan story but uh too small of an audience for that uh, i don't care if you have it let's do it chris crossway was about 20 yards away from returning an onside kick one time if his momentum as the biggest man on the field didn't carry him into the sidelines and across the entire track, he may have gotten into the end zone. Chris Crossway, folks, I'm 6'3", 300 pounds right now. Chris Crossway, one of our uh, alumni from our Dylan and I's high school, <laughs> makes me look small. Like, his his shoulder width is, like, is ridiculous. It's another, like, three inches past mine, and I... He picked me up once in the locker room, and I swear, folks, felt like I was being coddled and ready for nap time. Shout out to Crossway Construction. Yes, you of are course. Out there listening. I mean, we could always use an extra sponsor. But anyway. I don't think they get internet in Truxton, so I don't know. <laughs> How about we talk about the Cincinnati Bengals and a changing of the guard? <sighs> Jay, how do you feel about the Bengals? He does. Oh, is Jay there? Did he fall asleep on us? Is that why he took his camera off? <gasps> but anyways, um, no, the Bengals, man, I, I don't know why they're trying to start Ryan Finley now. I feel like they should have done it two or three weeks ago to audition him. And if they like him, stick with him. And then you'd be able to move on from Dalton and maybe some team would try and trade for him. I'm just saying. Uh, Dalton. <laughs> He's been in the league long enough. He's gone to the playoffs with, like, how many years? What was it, four years straight he went to the playoffs consecutively? Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, he's had experience to get to the playoffs, just not perform in the playoffs is the difference in that. But, 
He also had Mr. Average so so uh, Marvin Lewis. Oh my God! Like I've never seen a coach so okay with going nine and seven or eight and eight. No, exactly. And as far as why you would make the move at this point, um, again, this is more knowledge I like, was listening to from right after the trade deadline. Hey, yeah. we're gonna start Finley. Uh, Zach Taylor, you're like three weeks late, bud. Uh, RJ Bell and the boys on Straight Out of Vegas were saying that if you're first year coach in Zach Taylor and you have noticed a changing in um, culture at NFL, so to speak, lately, where first year coaches can get fired after a bad season. I guess if you're in a scenario where you're winless and you keep putting the same product out there, expecting different results, that just makes you look like a fool. So you might as well try something new and at least win one game. Uh, if it works, Finley then you look like a genius. Preseason, man. He did. He did. You know, if it works, you look like a genius. If it doesn't work, then you say, hey, I mean, I had a fourth round pick. What do you want from me? But yeah, you're totally right about Andy Dalton. I would love to bore our listeners with some some Andy Dalton stats right now. Go ahead, so, Dylan. I know you've been waiting to talk about that. I really have because I saw you earlier on Twitter. Maybe it was you. Maybe it was Jay. Take a little shot at the old Red Rifle. Might have been I've me. Always, I, I'm I usually a pretty a big Red Rifle boy. hater. Andy Dalton, three-time Pro Bowler, uh, draft pick in 2011 from TCU, folks, for the Cincinnati Bengals. He has a career record of 68. 58-2, and two, a 62.2 career completion percentage, 30,352 yards. That's only 2,000 shy of number one all-time behind Ken Anderson. He is tied with Ken Anderson for number one all-time in touchdown passes for the Cincinnati Bengals with 197. He has 21 fourth-quarter comebacks, 24 game-winning drives. And uh, like I said, three-time Pro Bowler, like you said, went to the playoffs four years in a row, starting his rookie year in 2011 Mm -hmm. all the way to 2015. Unfortunately, they lost in the wild card every single year. At home, too. Multiple times. At home. Now, here's the bad with Andy Dalton, and here's why maybe they're looking to move on. Maybe he's not the franchise. In late-night games, he is 6-15. and In the division, he is 22-25. and 25. Uh, In 2016, when A.J. Green only started 10 games, Dalton was 6-9-1. And in 2018, just last season, he had an injury, only played in 11 games, and he was 5-6. and six. A.J. Green also was injured last season, played in nine games himself. But as far as Dalton goes, I mean, as far as durability, as far as availability... He's only not started 16 games twice in his entire career. And another point I'd like to make in his defense is that since he entered the league in 2011, he's had five different offensive coordinators. Now let's talk about sacks. This season alone, Dalton has been sacked 29 times. Comparatively, Aaron Rodgers has only been sacked 17 times. And those sacks are pretty well boosted by these bookend games because in the first game against Chicago, Rodgers was sacked five times. And in this last game against Kansas City, Rodgers was sacked five times. So that's ten sacks in just two games. So really, you could say... Do you want to talk about the other six games in between, though? Yeah, uh, he only was sacked either... <laughs> twice was the most. I mean, yeah. he was, he's been getting protected. And that's what I'm saying. I mean, Dalton has been behind a horrible offensive line without his number one weapon in A.J. Green. I mean, without John Ross as well, who was a first-round draft pick, we could talk about that. But, I mean, Joe Mixon hasn't been performing behind this line either, and I don't see the Bengals talking about benching Joe Mixon anytime soon. So I just think that Dalton's getting a bad uh, shake right now. His next step in his career, the next team he goes to, is going to be happy they signed him because he's either going to be the best backup in the league or he's going to help some team rebuild. All right, with Dalton... The thing is, I I understand he's had a a crappy roster around him a bunch. I understand that. But still, you got to look at some of the other QBs that have had nothing around them either, and they still produce. So kind of my argument is this. Look at the um, Marcus Mariota situation. Had plenty of talent around him, still couldn't produce. I feel like if you put Andy Dalton in that same situation in Tennessee, I think he just doesn't get it done. He's never broken over 30 touchdowns. 
in the season, ever. He's 